Hi guys, it's Dan here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the SERP Analyzer tool on Surfer SEO. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Surfer SEO is basically a kind of do-it-all SEO tool that kind of gives you um, analysis for kind of SERP Analyzer, uh, content research, uh, keyword research, backlinks, all that kind of stuff. It's a real kind of all-in, uh, all-encompassing tool. And particularly today, we're going to be looking at the SERP Analyzer, which essentially uh, enables you to enter in some keywords and have a look at, you know, what's actually making people rank, what's really triggering it. And um, unlike other tools, there's no guessing games. All the information is kind of right in front of you, and it makes it really, really easy to kind of make these tweaks and improve your rankings. So uh, I'm basically going to run you through how to do that today, guys. Uh, so once you've signed in, obviously, you've got this box up here to enter your keyword. For this one, we're actually going to obviously add in a keyword for the SERP. So say, for example, our niche is tennis court maintenance. Uh, you just add that in, but obviously just add in whatever your specific niche is. You've got the option here, which is great to actually have a desktop scrape or a mobile scrape. I'm going to use this one for desktop. And then finally, before you hit enter, you just need to have in your own location. So obviously for us, we're United Kingdom. But you can actually specify certain locations within a country, which is a really great feature. I've never seen that really on any kind of tool. Uh, but for this particular search, it's going to be a nationwide search. So we're going to leave that in as United Kingdom and just press enter on that. So what initially confused me was I pressed enter and I thought, you know, why is nothing happening? But all that's actually happening is you're entering in your keyword and it needs to just load in all that data down here at the bottom. So uh, don't be impatient like me. Just wait, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. And this bar, as you can see, is now loading up. Uh, once it's all done, all you need to do is actually click on your keyword there and all the data will pop up ready for you to use and analyze and obviously work out kind of where the correlations are. So as you can see, that's just finishing up now. And it should be done in a second. There we go. So it says analysis is ready. Once that pops up, all you need to do is click that keyword, as I said, and there you are, all your, all your kind of data is there in front of you. So this looks a little bit daunting as you first come into it. You're thinking, you know, what does all this mean? You've got a graph in front of you, you've got your keyword, and you've got all these things down the side. It's actually very, very easy to work out and kind of go through, which I'm going to do that for you now. Uh, so basically, it's showing this graph here, and it says body words down one side and position in search results. So obviously, this bit down here is easy to work out. You've got kind of the top one to ten um, of the search results here. So that's kind of where the top one to ten of the, of the actual SERP is. And as you go further down, you can see the graph kind of going down slowly. So obviously there is a correlation there. And that's actually backed up when you go down the side and you have a look at this uh, little graph here next to where it says words. And what that graph means is it says correlation is 60%. It's actually saying that there's a correlation between how many people, um, so basically the number of body of words in the actual content of the article and where they then rank for that uh, keyword in Google. Um, so for this particular keyword, obviously tennis got maintenance. You can see that people who have just about 800 words are ranking in the in the top 1 to 10. Then after that, there's actually a significant drop-off, really, from keywords. It kind of goes to 600, 700, and then right back down to, you know, 400 and 300 down lower in the rankings. So that correlation is essentially saying to you, look, if, if you want to rank for tennis squad maintenance, it's best practice to have as much content in there as possible, maybe the 800, 900 sweet spot, because the people who are ranking 1 to 10 have got that amount of content in there. So that's kind of what Google are liking. Um, so to describe that a little bit more, so obviously we've got the word section selected here, which is why that graph is showing. If I just hover over the question mark, it'll explain exactly what it is. So it's obviously the number of words within the body, which we worked out. Um, and yeah, so basically what you can get, do is kind of go through these different sections on the left hand side, tick these boxes and see where the correlations are. So if I just scroll up, so we're in the st structure section at the minute, which is kind of the body of the content. As you can see, this exact keyword density section has got a very poor correlation graph. And this actually means that there's no real correlation between the exact keyword density and the rankings of that keyword. For example, if I click on this, you'll see that the graph is all over the place. You know, you've got some people with a keyword density there of 0.009. The people who have a different keyword density over here, you know, it, it's all over the place. There's no real way of determining whether that is something that Google are looking at for this keyword. So kind of you can have a look at that and find your own kind of balance and what you feel and maybe test some things out. But what it's showing is that keyword density of this particular word is a little bit all over the place and it's not the biggest concern maybe as opposed to something like, you know, if I tick, if I untick that and I go to missing common words and phrases, that's got a massive correlation. Um, so if I tick that, you'll actually see a really big correlation. You can see that the people who are ranking in, in number one to 10 are, they, they, they're not missing many of the, of the related keywords that you want to be adding in. Whereas up here, when you get into the 20s and more, there's way more keywords that are related that people just aren't adding into their articles, which is obviously affecting their ranking. Um, to just describe that a little bit more, you can actually hover over the question mark, and it literally says the number of missing common words and phrases, which is exactly what I was kind of just saying there. Um, so pretty much to sum it up, basically what you want to be doing is going through all these sections on the left-hand side, uh, working out kind of which ones have the correlations, and then creating a, a, an SEO strategy for that keyword of the things that you, know, you may need to change or you feel are important to change to actually improve the ranking. So if I kind of select all of these here, you'll see that different graphs are popping up. These ones, obviously, not much correlation from the graphs. Again, the same there. Uh, structure and body, we've been through all that. So if I just keep going through, as you can see, there's some correlations with those ones. 
But you know, there's so many sections. There's kind of content sections like paragraphs and keywords. Down here, there's uh, images section. You know, you've got link section and whether that's relevant for the particular keyword. So I'm just going to load a few of these up as an example, and we're going to go through some to kind of give you more of an idea. Uh, so if I just go up and knock off the ones that I've already done, there we go, get them off. So as you can see, you can kind of go through and have a look at which ones have really strong correlations. So for example, words here, we've already been through, that's kind of a full correlation. But if I keep going down, you can see characters. So if I question what that is, it says the character count within paragraphs. So, you know, without white spaces, this is a kind of, again, it's like the amount of content that you're, you're having created. And if I select that, you can see that, you know, there's way more characters and people are ranking a lot better with way more characters, essentially. So all you need to be thinking with that is I need more content. Uh, as you go through, there's many more things. So if I do select something uh, along the lines of image alt tag, you can see that that's very big there. Um, so if I question mark that, it says the number of exact matching keyword appearing on the website within an image alt tag. So what it's trying to say to you there is the images A are obviously important for your website, but obviously alt tagging them up properly with the exact match keyword is a ranking factor because as you can see, people who are doing that are sitting in the one to 10 very well and the people who aren't are dropping off. Um, so they're saying, you know, maybe aim for about three of them per, per article for this, um, for this, well, on the actual article for this keyword and it should improve the ranking. So it, it's all about correlation. It's all about seeing which uh, parts of this keyword that you're looking at um, can you improve to improve your ranking. Uh, so if, what's quite big with this one actually that I found was when I went to links, as you can see, there's not really much significance there. I mean, even having uh, a number of external links, you know, there's there's no data that actually pops up for external backlinks. That actually tells you off the bat really that this isn't really something to be too concerned about. And it's probably best to invest your time in focusing on the ones with obviously the green correlation because you can really tell that there's a correlation as to, you know, what people are doing uh, specifically in the actual uh, SERPs to actually rank in Google that Google likes. So uh, that's kind of the main focus really, I think. It is just kind of showing you and giving you an idea of what you feel may help uh, to rank with that keyword. So a really nice tool, really, really easy to use uh, and a lot more superior to other kind of uh, SERP analysis tools where you can see, oh no, uh, this person has this many links, I need this many links. You may not know whether that's the determining factor. It's the same for everything. It's the same for kind of anchor text ratios. It's the same for content. I mean, you can have a look and see, oh, you know, the people in number one to five or whatever are doing this with their, with their profile and that's great. But is that really what's changing? You know, is that really what Google's looking at and thinking, I need to actually uh, give these people some power and actually rank them in the top 10 for this? With this tool, you can clearly see down the side, you know, the things that Google, or sorry, the thing that um, Surfer SEO is prioritizing that Google is, is liking for people's site. It's obviously showing various uh, things that you can change within your actual keyword and within your article to improve your keyword. So really, really nice and easy to use. And I hope that kind of explains, you know, what is initially kind of, it seems a bit confusing, but obviously it's, you just kind of select the things down the side that have a correlation, analyze that for yourself, and then obviously work to improve them in your own time. Uh, finally, if I just scroll down, there's actually some sections here, which are really nice. It's obviously got a kind of a heads up display of kind of the rankings here for you. So you can actually see the companies that are ranking where they are uh, and all that kind of stuff and have a screenshot of the website if you'd like to see it. Uh, there's many different things that you can do on this section, but obviously it just gives you an idea of who's ranking. And then maybe if you want to have a look at this site, uh, you know, externally, you're able to do that. Uh, if I go into the keyword section, you can actually see uh, the keywords that people are ranking for. So as you can see, this company here not only ranks for tennis got maintenance, but ranks for many more keywords related to this actual term. So, you know, they have the authority within uh, within the niche, essentially, is what they're saying. And you can have a look at the other keywords they're ranking for and gain some ideas through that. And obviously, the list goes on and on that you can have a look through there. Uh, similar keywords, you've actually got kind of a really great list here of various different similar keywords that you can target. Um, not necessarily on different pages, even though you may, uh, but you can also obviously use that on your actual articles to improve the relevancy of it. And then obviously internal links. So say, for example, you have a tennis court maintenance page, uh, but then you have something like you want to add tennis court, you know, uh, construction or there you go. So construction cost. You could actually have the word tennis court construction in that tennis court maintenance page and then internal link it to a tennis court construction page, obviously, to add that power and relevance. So there's many things you can do with a similar keyword section and how kind of gauge an idea of uh, the best keywords that you can have a look to include into your article and actually add more relevance to. Uh, questions, nothing's actually popping up for that because I don't think it's one of those kind of keywords where many things will, but obviously if it, depending on the niche, you can have that. Uh, popular words, you've got kind of, again, a kind of list of, of keywords that people are mentioning within their articles for this particular keyword. So as you can see, tennis and maintenance and core, obviously as you'd expect, would be the more popular ones. But then you've got many other things like hard, which obviously kind of refers to the, uh, the, the surface itself. You've got carpet because some people can refer to courts as that. Uh, maintenance again, obviously down there, surfaces, sports, you know, all these different keywords. And again, it just gives you a really good idea of, of A, how many people are using what keywords and then 
you can kind of you know cross-reference that and think, am I using this a lot in my article? Do I need to include it? Would it be beneficial? All that kind of stuff just gives you the idea of. Uh, popular phrases, again, it's, it's very similar to kind of uh, the similar keywords. It's more popular phrases that people are looking for or kind of the density of the count. So you can have a look and, and, and think, okay, these ones obviously I am mentioning quite a lot, but I haven't mentioned the word hard. I haven't word, mentioned the word save, maybe for savings. Uh, you know, various other things. Track cleaning is a very good one because obviously cleaning is another one that's similar to maintenance. So many different keywords that you may be uh, considering to add in. Uh, common words, again, there you go. So you've actually got the uh, commonality of words based off of, um, you know, the, the rankings there. So 10 out of the 10 of the top pages are mentioning the obvious ones you'd expect. But then you, as you go down to kind of niche it down, you can see some other very specific things like quality porous, expert, brushing, you know, cost, contamination, many different variants that, again, give you more ideas to, to use. Uh, common phrases work very similarly as well, but obviously it's, it has to be a full phrase. So there's less of them available. Uh, prominent keywords and phrases, you've actually got, again, a kind of, uh, this is almost like an overview of the last two we've been through. So they're the prominent ones that are, you know, being found in the top pages, the density of which, and then obviously the number of words. And then finally, a really great feature is the common backlinks. Uh, less relevant for this particular keyword, as we saw, because the, the uh, backlinks weren't, you know, massive for the actual keyword change. But these are kind of the biggest, um, you know, the, the, the amount of kind of companies that have links from these websites. So you can see kind of the popularity of them. For some reason, the sports for schools, you know, they must look at kind of making a lot of um, posts about tennis got maintenance or, or companies go to them with that. But you can gain an idea of essentially what your um, competitors are doing backlink wise and not necessarily, you know, you don't have to particularly copy those backlinks, but you can maybe try a skyscraper approach or you can look to get similar backlinks, but, you know, maybe with better metrics. It kind of depends on your technique and your, and your um, you know, or your, your thought process for that. But again, a really nice feature to be able to go through and have a look at, you know, the, the most common backlinks for that particular keyword. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for the Surfer SEO uh, SERP analyzer. Um, just to kind of re re recap with that, so obviously all you're doing is kind of going through, uh, selecting all these down the side and finding the ones with a higher correlation, and then taking that and thinking, right, do I need to actually apply that to my work? You know, is that important? Is it not? And then obviously, actually, just as important as selecting the ones with a high correlation, it's also dismissing the ones without. I mean, estimated traffic, for example, as you can see, is, is really not relevant for this keyword, which is massive because it shows that, you know, certain uh, websites that... You don't have to have a website, for example, that has a load of estimated traffic to rank it. That's not something Google's really looking at. Google, for this particular keyword, is actually having a look a lot more around content-related issues and uh, things that you can change and things that you can improve for the content specifically. So this will depend from keyword to keyword. It will always kind of differ, but a really, really nice tool to kind of show you the correlation between uh, why you may not be ranking as well as you want to and the things that you need to do specifically to change those things. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.